social media staff. Okay. Right, we're ready. Okay. Hi, uh, Mark here for National Health. Hope you're having a great day. That's a really nice day out. Uh, thankfully, we got past the 100 blast last week, and this week will be nice, and we'll have a great Thanksgiving. So uh, tonight, of course, we're talking about uh, dealing with winter challenges this month, and uh, we're getting ready for winter. We had, like I said, a good taste of it last week there, and uh, we just want to help patients to understand what it takes to get through the winter. So we'll go through some fun things. Of course, I'm Dr. Mark here, uh, doing chiropractic and nutrition here at National Health for over 40 years now. So lots of experience and seeing what's going on with all this stuff and uh, living through a lot of winters. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, everybody thinks that one winter is colder, one winter is warmer. You know, it's always changing. Every year is different. So just always a challenge to, to look at for like the last couple of weeks now, it's been really cold. And now, we, you know, sometimes you have Indian summer or whatever. It can be really nice. We, I know a lot of, a lot of uh, as old as I am, I remember Thanksgivings, even Christmases that were nice days, you know, with sunny 50s, you know, no snow. But there's been other ones too that were, it looks at, it looks like the Thanksgiving at least will be a nice, a nice one. So one of the challenges, of course, you know, the cold uh, as, as a stress to the body, um, and, uh, you know, we, we always try to stay warm during the winter. So uh, the winter, the, the cold weather is a stress. And uh, another thing is the hydration. Uh, you can see the snow here, but a lot of times in the house, um, we're looking at the dry air in the house because of the furnaces and things running. If you don't keep the fires and things going there, uh, it's important to look at that too. Now, one of the topics we talked about earlier was uh, why do I get sick? We kind of talked a lot about that last week. And so just the, the same information goes that we're going to expound on this week because if you don't keep the humidity correct, if you don't keep the pH correct, it, you, you, your body is allowed to get into these sicknesses. Now, um, like when you're around other people, uh, of course, last year, uh, you know, the, the powers that be said, oh, yeah, you can't go to Thanksgiving because you'll be around people and you're spreading all these bugs. Well, the thing is, these bugs are around. They've been around forever and ever. They're going to be around all the time. They're opportunistic. And what we mean by that is the immune system has to be weak to the point that allows these bugs to get a foothold and, and multiply. So if we can keep the body healthy, we keep the immune system built up, and we can keep the body working like it's supposed to, these bugs don't bother anything. Uh, and, and again, you know, you may have to have a little cough or a sniffle as the body deals with a different kind of bug. And, and, and in each uh, different climate, each different region, uh, even different country can have their own sets of bugs. So if you have somebody visiting from France, they may have a different virus that you have to learn how to deal with. And that's good for our bodies to go through that, to help develop immunity, keep, the immunity, keep your immunity sharp so it can handle all different kinds of things going on out there. But when you're just a big stress uh, with the cold weather, uh, plodding through the snow, all that kind of stuff. And also, uh, for the vitamin D, we're lacking sunshine. So uh, we want to have a lot of sunshine, uh, and you don't get that in the wintertime in this, in this area. So we recommend suntan beds. That may seem weird. Oh my God, you're, you're promoting uh, skin cancer, blah, blah, blah. Well, <laughs> again, the body, our bodies have been in sunlight and sunshine for ever and ever and ever and ever. And suntan beds are just a way of getting that to work and it's the sunlight, it's the, the, that radiation of the sunlight, the UV radiation, that helps to turn uh, vitamin D on, makes vitamin D active. Uh, and vitamin D comes from the cholesterol, believe it or not. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you gotta have the precursors from me, you gotta be able to, uh, to digest and absorb the fats that come into your body that promote that. Uh, it, you know, it's another word for calcium, uh, for vitamin D is calciferol, calcium calciferol, which again is a part of the, of the uh, uh, cholesterol stuff. So anyway, uh, just important to realize that sunshine is good, and if you can go live in Florida for a couple months, that's great. Uh, but again, the sun is not up a lot, and, and it, it, the, the season has changed, so you need that good between 10 and 2 o'clock sunlight to activate vitamin D. So by the end of the winter, you know, we're pretty low in vitamin D, which lowers the immune system's ability to work correctly. So going to a suntan bed, not for you to get a suntan, but just to be there once a week, that's the way you can help the body. Have humidifiers going to keep, make sure you keep your, especially in the bedroom, to keep the nasal passages moist. If they get dry at night, they have a tendency to crack. That allows 
you know, or be irritated that allows the bugs to get in, that kind of stuff. Very simple. And, and you don't have to buy an expensive humidifier, even for the furnace and things. You can just put a wet towel back of a chair. I mean, that's about as simple as you need, but just keep the humidity in your bedroom uh, working correctly. Um, eat incorrectly during the winter time. You know, this, the citrus fruits are good, but vegetables have a lot of the same things in them uh, that we like to promote and not the sugars. Now, oranges aren't too bad, but like, you know, people think they have to have bananas for potassium. Well, bananas are high sugar, where you can just get to use, eat celery. Celery has the same amount of potassium, but without all the sugar. So again, you know, you know we, we, there's ways of getting the body to work correctly uh, so that it stays healthy during the winter time and you don't have to have flu and all this stuff that they want to give you shots for. Uh, the shots are not healthy. They may help with something, but they're not really healthy. They're not, they're not a nutrition. And you're bypassing all the body's natural immunity by injecting things directly into the body. So you have to really realize what these shots are uh, to know if they're helpful or not. Um, and then, of course, taking supplements. Uh, we have here like fish and fish oils. That's where, you know, a good sources of real vitamin D come from. Uh, but synthetic vitamin D3 that you, get, you can get real cheaply at certain stores, well, that's a form of D, but not the one, not the thing that really helps the body to be healthy. It's better to get it in an actual food like a fish uh, thing or even other animal uh, sources uh, have the good fats that have a vitamin D as part of that in the precursor form, but the body has to activate and then the sun activates there too. So a lot of good information about vitamin D out there. You just have to realize that um, sometimes you're talking about synthetic vitamin D3, sometimes you're talking about a whole food. You, you have to realize what form the vitamin D is coming in um, and, 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 and vitamin C and all the other vitamins. It's best to get it in a food source. But uh, one of the big problems is our bodies, uh, many people's bodies' digestive system isn't working right. Their livers are overloaded with toxins, so they're not going to absorb uh, the vitamin D in foods. Even the synthetic stuff, a lot of times, won't be absorbed. So you can put things in your mouth, but if they're not being absorbed in the body, they don't do you any good. So that's why it's important to make sure digestion is working correctly, your probiotics are working correctly. Again, the pH of the body. The pH has a lot to do uh, with your hydration. Again, back to the dry thing there, and, and then the salt, uh, salt balances. We're trying to get patients to use sea salt or mineral salt as the electrolytes to help the kidneys be able to uh, move fluid and keep your hydration correct, which also again helps the pH. If the pH is correct, you don't have yeast infections. All these kind of things are all some of the simple things that are never talked about in mainstream. Uh, so we talk about it all the time here at Natural Health because what we're after here is natural health. So we want to get back and live through the winter so we can get to spring, so we can have a nice uh, you know, time that, but it'll take a while to get there, of course. If you're living in this rural area, it's going to take three, four months to get there is what we have to endure. But the one good thing about wintertime, it does make you appreciate spring and summer a lot more. So rather than just being in a place where it's just always sunshine all the time, uh, it's great, but you miss the seasons. And I think seasons are good. And I actually do think it helps somebody to strengthen, to go through different seasons. Uh, it helps the body to keep that immune system sharp and realize that there's other needs the body has nutritionally for different seasons. Um, so I think that's enough for me. Uh, uh, um, from behalf, on behalf of all the folks here at Natural Health, uh, make sure you have a great uh, and a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, try not to eat junk. <laughs> Maybe one small piece of pumpkin pie, but you know, stay away from all the other stuff. Uh, and try to eat a lot of good foods. Again, we have uh, all these holidays to go through. We got a lot more to happen yet, and uh, we don't want to be sick. You know, from what we ate during Thanksgiving, because if you eat a lot of junk during Thanksgiving and you lower your immune system and you get bugs, they'll take two, three weeks for it to kick in and to be sick during Christmas and New Year's. And so it's, the same thing works for Christmas and New Year's. So again, it's just a kind of a delay there, but you don't want to be sick. So try to eat well. Uh, try to get out and get into the fresh air and sunshine that's there now. And um, hopefully you have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, don't forget too that on our website, a lot of our videos are there to explain what we do here at Natural Health. You can send it for our, our email newsletter. We just send out one a week. We don't overload your uh, box, uh, your inbox with emails, and uh, a lot of good information there. We do have free consultations if you want to know what we're doing here. If you want to find out what we're doing, because we do things differently here. We're not we're not mainstream medicine. We're not 
promoting drugs and things like that, which have their place, but uh, there's other ways of doing things that are a lot better for the body. So we're here to help. Uh, anyway, Dr. Chip can take over. Have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Again, I'm Dr. Chip, and we will continue with the help winter, dealing with winter challenges. Uh, so let's go ahead and do it. So again, uh, Dr. Mark explained there too about different foods that we can eat, different things that we can do for our own health, sunshine, everything. Uh, but in the winter months, of course, that is getting to this point where not as much sunshine, uh, again, getting more to the colder weather, the foods that we eat, the holidays here and there, we're gonna get in some different foods here. Uh, but one aspect to keep our bodies doing well is uh, movement, uh, moving our bodies. And so again, our, our bodies are important to maintain. We, again, uh, should, should obviously move our bodies or exercise. And a lot of times too, is that when we say like moving or exercise or anything like that, Typically, we think that well, we need to you know, be working out a lot or we need to be doing hours and hours of activity, uh, but really, it's, it all comes down to how you are able to do it or enjoy doing that too. And so some people, for exercise, it, it could be a walk. It could be, you know, 15, 20 minute walk. Uh, even though it's getting cold, uh, you can kind of get bundled up and get everything going and then just again, take a simple, nice walk. That's good, natural movement for your body to help Again, get good blood flow, circulation, again, uh, helping your body to, to function properly. Uh, and then also, too, is that we kind of, you would say, uh, tend to say that activities or the certain work that we do isn't sufficient enough. And a lot of times is that that work that we do, the physical labor, uh, the different things that uh, people, you know, and with their jobs and everything tend to do, that is a lot of good activity. Uh, and sometimes we don't see that as a good exercise. Uh, so for instance, there is uh, research out there that suggests that when they were able to give, uh, show a study on uh, cleaning maids, like in the hotels and all that, they were able to see that when they were uh, reframed, they're actual just thinking about or seeing that the, the movements that they're doing, the work that they're doing, when they can see that as a good activity, as physical exercise, they were able to uh, normalize or make their health markers increase, or you would say in a better state. And so just being able to see that those things are helpful for our bodies can actually be a big, big step there and actually be very helpful for, for your overall health and well-being. Uh, and then two, of course, is that we don't want to exhaust or overdo everything. Uh, we want to make sure to take proper rest and recuperation when we need to. And so the mind or the brain here, as again, you can see here, we've got the logical brain, we've got the creative brain, kind of left and right side. Uh, and again, too, is just we want to make sure is that we're able to exercise our brain power in different ways as well. And so the logical side is a lot of times we're, we're using that a lot, and again, in a good way, because we want to make sure that we're planning ahead when we're doing, or we're doing certain work or activities, we're analyzing different things. That's good because we want to make sure that we're progressing in our work. Uh, but also too, is that we want to be able to work that, that other side. And we're working the whole brain as a, again, a cooperative component here. Uh, when we work both sides, it's able to balance and sync that better. And so that creative side, again, is more of that, that being able to uh, you know, connect with friends or family or uh, have different activities here and there Whatever fun or whatever you enjoy doing, it could be reading a book, it could be building something. Uh, just again, something that's creative uh, that you can use your imagination or you can you know, do things with your hands, anything like that. That helps to simulate different parts of the brain. And so when you're able to use your brain in different ways, that's actually very helpful for your overall health uh, and helps your body as well. Because if we're always kind of doing one thing so much, we're not able to use the other side so much and it's not able to, you would say, sink very well. Uh, so we can kind of get, you would say, stuck in our ways if we're not able to think creatively uh, at certain times. Of course, too, we can't just stay in there. We gotta make sure to come back to the logical and, and be able to do uh, everything in a balanced manner. So again, just another way to help ourselves, especially in the winter time when uh, you can't do so many things, you gotta get creative 
about having fun or enjoying uh, different things in your day-to-day -day activities. Uh, so I put a, an ear on here. Uh, this is more about listening, listening to different things. Uh, now, a, a lot of times we, we typically want to, when we uh, connect with other people, when we're uh, kind of doing things all the time, we forget to just be still and listen. Listen to different things. It could be uh, different insights. It could be uh, connecting with people, listening to people rather than talking over or uh, actually talking too much. Uh, but it's again a good practice to actually uh, implement because when we're able to listen carefully, we're able to kind of tune in and see what's going on. And so this kind of is an aspect too of listening to our own body. Uh, what is our body telling us? And sometimes when we're going, you know, we're doing all these things here and there, we're going, 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 we forget to listen to say, hey, we need to rest, we need to recover. Or another thing too is, you know, for, um, you'd say the body wants to go, wants to do something, we want to listen to that. We want to make sure that we're able to listen to, you know, taking that next step or doing that fun activity or doing anything like that. And so again, listening can be an important aspect for our health there too. And so the, uh, another important thing too is as we get into Thanksgiving here, we want to enjoy the little things. We want to uh, be able to be thankful for different things there too. And so when we are able to enjoy things, uh, that helps to uh, stimulate the brain in a certain way and it helps to promote good health for ourselves. And so when we're able to practice enjoying things, uh, we're able to actually, uh, you would say, live life to a, a little different extent there. And so sometimes we can kind of just get through our day and uh, get through the grind or whatever. Uh, but really when we're able to kind of like sit back and say, hey, like, can I enjoy this part of the day? or uh, can I enjoy this activity? Whether it, it is a mundane thing that you do all the time, when you're able to enjoy something, uh, again, it's able to work, well, again, actually able to stimulate your brain in a certain way, but you're able to kind of move your body in different ways there too. So again, when you can, enjoy the little things. And so the other thing is to give thanks. So Thanksgiving, uh, we, again, we talk about the foods here and there. Uh, we talk about you know, not eating so many of the you know, sweets and desserts and all that. Uh, but when we, again, of course, fill up on the good foods, we're uh, not so uh, apt to eat the, all those things. But the, the more, or the uh, another important aspect there too, is to really give thanks. Uh, we forget that how, how powerful our, our thanksgiving or our, our gratitude can be for our health. And so really, we used to do this a lot of times, we, we sometimes kind of forget about it, but when you're, I mean, you would say before a meal, you would, you would give thanks. You would, you would be able to sit, sit still, stay calm, and you would be able to uh, give thanks for, for the meal that was prepared, uh, to be able to give thanks for the little things. It could be uh, your health or your, your family or your friends or anything like that. But really that's giving you time to stay in this, you know, say this moment here, this present, and to help kind of refocus your attention and really to help, you would say, feel just thankful. And when we do that more of the time, when we practice that more of the time, it actually helps our bodies to be more in this uh, neutral and natural state so that we're feeling more at ease, more calm, and that we can actually uh, work on or you would say adapt to different things. And so again, it's always good to practice that and I would say or I'd encourage to really I get back into that, being more, very, you know, being thankful for the things we have, and especially a good practice for that is before and after your meal, because again, we kind of typically are able to sit down, uh, be be relaxed, and then and go through that process. So, uh, again, always uh, always good to give thanks. And so that does it for our uh, health shop tonight. And this is an old slide, so disregard some of the information here. Uh, but you can always follow us at Natural Health Quincy IL at Facebook, YouTube, Brideon, and Instagram. Uh, we are located at 2000 Jefferson Street in Quincy, Illinois. The number is 217-228-2040. Uh, so again, thank you everybody for watching. Again, uh, really we're wanting to share this information because we know that there are a lot of people that are suffering or sick or ill 
that just want different means of health. They, they, want to, they want to know that there's something else out there. And when you get tired of doing it one way for so long, again, we're here to help and we want to make sure that you're able to know that we're here so that we can support you on your health journey. So again, thank you so, for, so much for watching. Have a happy and awesome Thanksgiving and we'll see you next time.